Okay, this is uh, part two. Um, so we've tried again, we, we ran into some technical difficulties. Hi, I'm Eric Blum, I'm the president of Oak Valley College and welcome to Business Week. I'm here with Stephen Mendoza, one of our students at Oak Valley College and we're taking a little bit different perspective from what we've done from previous shows and, shows and what we're talking to Stephen about is specifically some things that businesses encounter or um, can explore in terms of tapping into this next generation and the business perspectives of them. So we're fortunate to have Stephen with us. Thank you, Stephen. Yeah. So um, so we've, we've already done this once, but we'll do this again. Uh, so identify to me one brand that resonates with you and, and tell me about that. Yeah, um, I think Nike really resonates with me and also with my generation just because of their um, bright logo and like or not so much their logo but their marketing it's all mm -hmm. bright it looks it looks like something's going on and then also the athletes that they choose to promote their products through mm -hmm. they are people that we can relate to because they look like us you know right. they're either younger or they're trying to get fit or they're doing something that we're also trying to do so it's just very relatable right right and and their messaging is targeted specifically primarily to your generation right. and, and it has been since its inception whatever the young generation is right. it tries to appeal to so yeah. they know what they're doing obviously yes and, very, and are very, very good at it so um and the next question comes to, you know, the, this uh, perception that I run across with many business people and you hear in current media and things like that is the, the, the perception of your generation and what, what you guys are and aren't. And so yeah. what do you consider to be the most misunderstood perception about your gen generation? Yeah. Um, I think oftentimes we are considered to be lazy or slackers or, you know, we're off our path. We lost our direction. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that we just do things differently and that's okay. And um, other generations have done things differently and they've right. been seen as slackers for that. So I think that's just a common reoccurrence. And just because we do things different doesn't mean that we're slacking or um, we've lost our path. Right, right. So. In, in along those lines too is uh, so what do you consider most valuable in terms of your um, work life relationship and and what do you guys, what do you and your peers um, value in terms of uh, success and and how do you describe that yeah um, I think uh, most of my generation would define success as knowing a lot of people and that sounds really broad because right. we're we're really about networking i mean look at social media mm -hmm. um we found ways for even the introvert to become a popular person <laughs> you know so we're really about networking and success is sometimes defined as how many people you know or how many people you can lean on when you need them in a certain situation mm -hmm. and i think a lot of people in my generation see that as a form of success so in terms of a business person trying to tap into that you know what so somebody of my age, I'm 50. So tell me, you know, oh, Stephen, I want to reach your your group, your population. Um, what does that mean in terms of uh, being an older person trying to build a relationship with a younger person? Yeah, um, because networking is so heavy in our day-to-day uh, -day lives now, it is easier when it's not so much of a um, a cold or distant reaching out. So like selling. Reaches. Yeah. Yeah. We're not trying or, to sell you. We're trying to build a, some sort of community or, or exactly yeah, like a relationship like in a sense. Like yeah, we yeah. want to feel like you care to some extent at least, <laughs> you know, like we don't want to answer the phone and it's like a bot saying like, you know, please right. buy our product. So we like the warmer tone of marketing, I guess. I right. Think, I would say. And, and even, I mean, that brings you back to, to Nike and what you describe about Nike right. is they even even as a this massive brand you somehow identify with the relationship with them right yeah. which is really amazing when you think about it is to yeah. say this big conglomerate company that's very cold and distant and stuff like that mm -hmm. you have you feel some sort of personal connection with right them. yeah yeah they do it through like who they use to advertise because right. we feel connected with that person. So we automatically feel like, oh, I have a connection to Nike. Like, yeah, they care about me. Yeah. But they don't. Like, <laughs> but they you know, don't. Right. You just feel that. So. Right. So in terms of in terms of local businesses now, turning to you know most business is local. So tell me about you know what you see out there in terms of who you interact with on a regular basis locally. What do you see as really a successful? business that has helped build a relationship with you or that has not or unsuccessful you know take that both ways is to say uh, what kind of engagement do you want to see from a local business that helps you feel like you're part of them or right 
Um, with local businesses, obviously, they're in my community. So mm -hmm. I like to see local businesses reaching out to the community and mm -hmm. connecting with the community. Because like with the athletes of Nike, we relate with them. You know, I relate with my community. So if you're touching my community, helping my community out, then I relate with you. Mm -hmm. So I would like to see a lot more community stuff going on with some local businesses mm -hmm. um, that also brings awareness because a lot of like smaller businesses or companies I don't know about and a lot of other people don't as well. Mm -hmm. And um, our generation is a lot about like relational and connecting and stuff. So we want to know what's out there. So right. more community stuff, I guess, would make it more known to us. So do you have a specific, can you think of a specific company? I mean, even Starbucks, which is not, not necessarily local, right. but everyone gravitates around Starbucks because there is that sort of community feel at a Starbucks, right? right? Yeah. So d tell me about a company that you think is is really good. And coffee shops oftentimes come to mind, especially like the local coffee shops or something. Yeah. Is there a, co a company that you can think of that has helped bridge that with you? Oops. Right. This is the problem with the live show. <laughs> Sorry. No, it's all good. Okay. Um, I think there's actually Augie's Coffee and Red okay. Sure. They've done a really good job at that because people there's market night right next to it mm -hmm. and it's become kind of like a grouping place where people meet up and they hang out there and they you know it really does reach out to the community because they serve coffee they serve hot chocolate whatever mm -hmm. tea whenever you're there and um, they really do make a very welcoming space there they also have a room in the back that's quieter for like studying and stuff like that mm -hmm. so they're pertaining to the community because they know that like um, the U of R is right there. You know, mm -hmm. there's college students, there's high school students, and they might need to get their homework done. So they're caring about their community by um, kind of adhering to their target market by right. also having that room or just being available to the people that are at market. And uh, look, looking at that specific example, what, can you remember the first time you went there or why you went there the first time? Yeah. Okay. I went there because I was invited by friends, which says a lot about the whole like relational aspect. Yeah. Um, they liked it. So they invited me there and we went there to do homework. So that was one of the first times I'd ever been there. Okay. And it was very accommodating. The tables were big enough to fit all of us. And um, yeah, our stuff came out quick and it was like a welcoming environment. Okay, that's interesting. So it, so if I'm hearing from you, it's the experience is almost more, I mean, you didn't say anything about how good the coffee right. is or yeah. anything. Like that. It's, the experience was more important than, and that didn't cost you anything. No. Yeah. Um, which is really intriguing is to say, okay, how do business people think about that is, uh, right. you know, when it's always about, I need to sell more product or service or something like that. And then the main thing that drew you into to make this a loyal relationship had nothing to do with right. the product, the product. Yeah. yeah. That's really, really, I'm right. sure challenging for lots of businesses to figure right. out. Right. Yeah. yeah. So you have to figure out what's really going to draw them in and then your product is kind of there. Yeah. So it kind of flips the whole marketing aspect on its head. Like yeah. you're not doing it for your product. You're doing it to draw people into the place, the right. space. or you know, right. Which is obviously what Starbucks has done too. And then right. meanwhile, exactly. sell $5 coffee on the side or yeah. Aggies. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so yeah, it's fascinating. No wonder businesses are so frustrated by you guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can see that now that I'm a business student. Yeah. So, uh, so transitioning to that question is, is as a business student and as, uh, as part of Oak Valley College, t just tell me briefly about about you know what is the best business idea or concept that you've learned so far here um, yeah so in our entrepreneurship class we mm -hmm. actually had to come up with a product and we had to pitch it at the end and I learned a lot in that but one of the biggest things I learned was target market and how you really need to like condense down to mm -hmm. what you um, what you're actually trying to go after because I always saw business as like oh just get as many people in as you can you know right and then I started to learn like no, you need to target a specific type of people or you're going to get nobody because it can go the opposite direction as well. Right. So, yeah, you can't be Walmart. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, very few, only Walmart can be right, Walmart. only Walmart can be Walmart, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like even Target, like it, they seem so alike, but even Target can't do that. You know, right. they are they have a different level of people that go there, different type of people. But yeah. everybody goes to Walmart because everybody's everything's there. So. Right, right, right. Yeah. So tell me about mm -hmm. that specifically in that experience is to say, what do you see as the most, challenging or exciting element of trying to to, to figure that out for your business plan. Yeah. I mean, do you, do you mind sharing what your business plan was? Or? Yeah, well, my business plan actually started as a joke and it okay. turned into something that I actually almost um, ended up in the top three for, but it was called the nose goes and it was like a small um, 
like filter that you would put in your nose and it blocks out all airborne toxins or toxins. Yeah. So uh, okay. like if you're around somebody who's smoking or if somebody got sick and they're around you, it just won't go in through your nasal cavity. It was kind of interesting. <laughs> nose, yeah. nose goes. But um, I love yeah, that. so it was like no go, nose goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of went back and forth. Yeah. But um, yeah, my target market ended up being younger people because so many people are affected by secondhand smoke more mm-hmm. than people who are actually smoking. So um, it was for like younger kids or teens who had that problem. Mm-hmm. And I found that target market, it was kind of hard in the beginning because I wanted to market to everybody. Everybody sure, needs that, course. right? So, but then I realized the younger generation or, mar- or um, people because those are the ones being affected most by secondhand smoke. When I did my research, I found that out. Cool. But yeah, yeah that's how I found my target fun. market for that. So, uh, and let me close with this question is, so what would you, what do you consider as, uh, uh, again, tapping into your, your generation is to say, what would be the one thing that one biz- that a local business could do to start engaging with uh, individuals, let's say, from 16 to 25 or something like that? Yeah. So to start engaging, um, really, if you hook a few you hook them all because they're all networked right so yeah, if you sure. get some good ones like how my friends invited me to the coffee shop yeah um if you get some people that are going to go out and they're going to spread your name and be like hey this is a cool space like we really like going there right then you'll that's how you're going to bring them in it's not going to be with it is going to be with a great product as well because right. like with nike they draw you in but then you get a great product from them so you should have a great product but to um really connect i would say you have to you have to get some solid people and right. that would start with being like aesthetically pleasing and like yeah. having a nice space and environment that they feel like cares about them. Cool. Well, thank you very much, Stephen. No I've problem. enjoyed this uh, yeah. and I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, join us each week as we bring you another story of business week at Oak Valley College. Thank you.